All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Ira Wolf, who is over on the other side of the country in Pennsylvania. How are you doing, Ira? Hey, good to see you again, John. Appreciate it. Yeah, and Ira is, is from Success Performance Solutions and is a millennial trapped in a baby boomer body and the world's first chief Googleization <laughs> officer, which I love. Uh, and what we're going to talk today about, and I'm so, I love this subject and I love the title of what we're going to talk about today. Because you're saying it's thriving in, in an era of never normal because one of my one of my pet peeves and most hated phrases is new normal. If I hear new normal again, I think I'm going to scream. So I love this never normal. <laughs> so okay. Ira, so Ira, what do you mean by the era of never normal? Yeah, I, and I, I, I'm all with you. I know last year, uh, you know, it came from this back to going back to normal, which which doesn't exist. Uh, and then there was the new normal, and then somebody came up with next normal, and then future next, and everybody had these variations. I, I, I go back to my favorite one is from Young Frankenstein would be Abby Normal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that, that too. That too. Uh, so uh, I, I heard this phrase, uh, never normal. And I, I, I wish I could remember where I read it or give credit to, but it got lost in a lot of my readings. Uh, but it's true. I mean, we're, we're really, it, it's not that we, we can't find peace and, and well-being and comfort. Um, but the reality is, is we're going to live in this era of uh, perpetual uncertainty. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot to say. People don't get it. Uh, and never normal is pretty scary. Um, but I, I think people, uh, just the concept of normal, I mean, we, we still keep hearing it. I mean, we're, most people agree we're not going back to normal, but finding normal, um, whether it's new normal or, or never normal, uh, whatever it is, uh, is, is really dangerous. I mean, it's, it, it's a, because that also sends, it sort of gives us the safety, uh, a comfort that we can become complacent. We're just going to go back and be able to take a deep breath and relax. And yet we live in a world that, you know, is, is VUCA, is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And things are going to continually change and they're going to change at a faster pace. Now, that doesn't mean we can't become comfortable. Uh, and, you know, part of this, uh, what's, what does, what's the ultimate part of thriving in an era of never normal? It's becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's the key point. And as I was speaking to somebody um, yesterday, actually, and they were talking about uh, the information age, you know, how the information age has ended and we're now in the inside age or something. But if you look back on the ages before, like the industrial age, they were really, really, they were quite long, significant periods of time. The information age was only like 25 years or something. And now we've moved into another one. So to your point, you're going to have to get used with these massive paradigm shifts. Shifts. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we talk, they, you know, historically, and I'm not a historian, but you, you learn how to speak in those languages. You know, we talked about the agricultural era, mm -hmm. and that lasted millennium. I mean, that yeah. lasted, uh, you know, from the beginning of time, whenever you want to pick that up, you know, through maybe the early 1800s. And then we had the Industrial Revolution, and the Industrial Revolution uh, been, you know, 1850, 1840, uh, through the mid 1990s, and and you know, yeah. and now since then, it seems like every ten, every every few decades, uh, we went from the the computer age to uh, you know now we're in the fourth industrial revolution or some variation of of that, uh, and you know people they're going to last you know ten years. There's an interesting um, scenario, and this came from I believe it was Ray Kurzweil from uh, Singularity University. You know, and he talked about the uh, the parrot. It's, it's beyond the paradigm shift, but it's sort of the the, the paradigms. And it was that that we are that time is accelerating, change is accelerating so fast that what what used to take that if you're I, I want to get this right. If you were 40 years old today, by the time you're 60, so 20 years out, um, that the pace of change will be four times faster. Now we hear that and it's abstract and, and it's what does that really mean? What it means is that if you took all of 2020, 12 months of 2020, and, and within 20 years, it's four times faster, 
the next event that we have similar to 2020 will occur in three months, not 12 months. So yeah. if you think back of all the change, you know, everywhere from the pandemic uh, to the social unrest uh, to, um, you know, technology advancing to how work changed to uh, basically even even this massive in injection of, of funding, you know, how it how it changed everything. All of that would have happened between January and March, yeah. not between January and, and December. Now, what's even scarier that how fast it's changing, that if you're 20 years old today, so over 40 years, if you're 20 years old today, by the time you're there 60, it will, the rate of change will be 11, every 11 days. So can you imagine that, you know, the young Gen Z and, and a younger millennial, a college student that experienced 2020, what took a year to accomplish or disrupt or progress, whichever way we want, whatever <laughs> verb we want to use, um, it's going to happen every 11 days, you know, in yeah. another 40 years. I mean, that, it's crazy. It's mind boggling. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully I'm around, but I, I don't think so. <laughs> that'll, that'll make me a very, very old baby boomer. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and probably it's, and millennials will be old at that point. <laughs> so mm. I'll, I'll have a yeah. zinger. And you know what's and you know what's really really what I always find fascinating. Okay, and I'll and I'll just give you, I came to the U.S. from Ireland. I came in the mid to late nineties to uh, to Silicon Valley during the dot com uh, era, and so there was the dot com. So since I've been here, there was the dot com implosion. There was nine eleven. There was the financial crisis. Now there's a pandemic, and if you think about it. Uh, as well as paradigm shifts, uh, 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 like is aging you know, of the fourth industrial revolution, we're also having major disruptions that are coming pretty frequently and with with almost predictable frequency now. Uh, and so we live in a in an era of flux, and it's happening all around us. But yet we always try, we desperately try to control things as opposed to learn to how to flow with them. No, you're so right, and and, it's, and it goes back to this normal. What you know, what we, mm -hmm. what someone feels is normal, and uh, you know, yesterday, um, I kind of walk. I, I took my wife to a, a doctor's appointment, and walked in, and everybody's required to wear masks. So it was like, oh, I had to go back to the car and get yeah. the mask. But then I turn around and walk into a grocery store, and don't need to wear the mask. Uh, where we are. But when you but then you turn on the news and I'm living in the Northeast and the vaccination rates were fairly high. Uh, and there's certainly some people still taking their chances. But there, there was that sense of normalcy going back to, oh, yeah, I remember how that used to be. But if you're living in the South or you're living in, in some of these places that have very, very low rates of vaccination, very high rates of the new Delta variant, um, you know, it's what's normal there. I mean, is it still abnormal or is that the new normal that they're going to live if they don't have vac vaccination rates that that jump up and until there's herd, this herd immunity, which could take years and years to, to develop naturally. Um, normal is always going to be a state of people getting sick um, mm -hmm. and disrupted events. And, um, you know, it, it's odd you you it's, it's odd that it's almost uncomfortable to walk into a populated place uh, these days that of people that don't have masks. And it's like, well, I don't need to wear one because they said I would, you know, I have double the double vaccine and had it for several months. Yeah. Yet, um, it's, that's uncomfortable where before to think that we'd have to don a mask, we'd have to put a mask on would have been really uncomfortable. And that would have been mm -hmm. abnormal. So yeah. it's evolving, and that's the never normal. I mean, the never normal is going to be a continual evolution. Um, you know, we just don't know what to expect. It's like even the stock market yesterday, it goes down. Oh, my goodness, you know, we're, we're going back and the world's going to fail. And today it's back up again, you know. <laughs> so, uh, it's volatile. Yeah, it's volatile. And I think to your point there is, I think we have to get away from this idea of, as you said, of a, of a normal, because my normal, your normal, the normal over there, whatever, but then none of them are the same. So there is no normal per se. Uh, I like that idea of, of the never normal, but I like, I just like that idea of, of 
being able to adapt and react uh, to whatever comes along and be innovative and be nimble. Because I think this is basically the skill set that you need going forward. Let's face it, I mean, back in the agricultural age, yeah, I mean, maybe every, I don't know, 50, 100 years, maybe some new innovation came along and you could learn it and adapt it. But now it's like, you know, you got to you got to flex with things fast. Oh, for sure. So, you know, even you go back, I mean, at least in my lifetime, um, you know, uh, the, the VCR was introduced and it took uh, 20 years to till it was adopted and phased out and the fax machine. And, and some people I recognize still use things like that. But that technology came and it was a slow adoption and then it got phased down and got replaced by somebody else. Uh, in my lifetime, I've had I've lived with 45 records, 78 records, uh, uh, eight tracks, CD, uh, you know, cassette tapes, CDs, DVDs, and now an MP3. Uh, so you, you have all those things, but when you think about how long it took to to transition from vinyl records uh, or plastic at that point, yep. and you know that and, and the different phonographs uh, and, and record players that were there, I mean that was maybe 50, 60 years, and then you know within a short period of time, by the time I mean, which is really odd for those of you who rem might remember Napster. Um, by the oh, time yeah. it got litigated in the Supreme Court, iTunes was out there. It didn't exist. They litigated a lawsuit uh, for something that didn't exist over about a three-year period. Uh, you know, it's it's crazy. I mean, that's that, that's how things are, and they're continuing to accelerate like that. So, how do when you when you're when you're working or talking or uh, with people, how do you help them start to figure out how to? Uh, move beyond, as I said, the natural inclination to want to have everything neat and tidy, to want to have everything demarked and defined and, and very, as I said, very orderly, because number one, that's not the way the world works anyway, but that is our tendency to try and do that. How do you help people move beyond that and figure a way to, if you like, embrace the chaos? Yeah, it, well, it's challenging. I'm, I'm not going to tell anybody that it's easy. There, there's certain people like you and me, and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of people that are more comfortable with change to some degree. Nobody mm -hmm. likes surprises, but uh, <laughs> the ability to to change. Uh, so that that's easier. You know, how do you get that group of people or the people that are on the margins of that uh, willing to do that? Uh, but you know, we can't get people to agree on vaccines or who even won our election. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so there's, there's people that are, are certainly going to be resistant. And uh, I heard this phrase, another phrase that, that, I, I, that really seems to describe uh, human beings is that human beings are addicted to certainty. Um, and, yeah. and even those, you know, obviously I've got my norms and my routines and, and breaking those uh, as much as I love change. Uh, there's certain routines and, and norms that I have a tough time giving up, as, as everybody does. But sometimes you have to, and you have to, to go about doing that. So the, the one thing that I really, uh, I, I discovered uh, just um, over the last, you know, during this journey over the last year and a half or so, um, was something that I, I, I started to, to think about maybe 15 years ago, was this adaptability. What's adaptability? It became my TED Talk, uh, make change work for you. How do you do that? And I talked about VUCA and going to VUCA Prime and you know turning that, you know, vol volatility into vision and uncertainty into understanding. And you can watch my TED Talk to hear the rest of it. Um, but it wasn't enough. It was still abstract. I mean, it's one thing to talk about going from uncertainty to, to understanding, but is how do you do that? And what... What I discovered last year through some research um, was, you know, what are what are the skills, what are the abilities that people need uh, to be able to move forward? And uh, they they've identified five personal abilities, and there's more to that because we all have our hardwiring and our character, how we approach it, and and then the environment that we're in also impacts that. But what can we do about it? What can we, we can't change our environment always that easily, but we can change us. And one of, you know, one of the five abilities was grit. And uh, certainly, you know, a lot of people had that uh, just to get through last year. And, and grit's really perseverance. So it's endurance. Mm -hmm. and the other is we heard a lot about another buzzword from the 2020 uh, was resilience. So is one is get knocked down, you get back up and you keep going forward. The problem is, is if you're going forward in the wrong direction, 
if you're trying, if you're going forward and trying to resist the future, uh, that we're all going to go back to working on site, uh, or we're all going to work uh, remotely, uh, we're all we're going to go back to the way it was. Um, that's endurance, that's grit, and it takes resilience because you're going to get knocked down a lot. But it doesn't help you move forward. It doesn't help you thrive. And that was what you, you talked about initially, thriving in this era of never normal. So the, the three additional abilities that people really have to work on, uh, one of them is called mental flexibility. Um, it, and some other people describe it as cognitive dissonance. It, it's having opposing views. How could um, two opposing thoughts make sense? How, how do you deal with that? Uh, we're living in a lot of cognitive dissonance, whether it's about politics, uh, whether it's about, uh, you know, what caused you know, one six, uh, what's the best way out of this? What's the future look like? Um, how do we digest that? How do we filter out some of that and help make sense for us? Not necessarily to change the world, but just how do we become comfortable with that? So learning to become more comfortable with or, or become better at mental flexibility. Um, the other two are uh, probably easier to accomplish. I think mental flexibility is, is, the, is, the, is the most difficult. Uh, one is, is, a, is, growth, is a growth mindset. And, and growth mindset is just the, the willingness to try new things that if I don't get it right the first time, I'm not a failure. Uh, we are going to make mistakes. We're, we're, we have to learn from our mistakes. That doesn't mean you have to, to just accept every error. Um, you want to strive. You want to strive to be be good at what you do. Uh, but it's having an open mindset. But in order to have an open mindset, the, the important part of growth mindset isn't necessarily just having that again open mindset. But it's having hope. It's it's hope that if they continue learning, and if I make this mistake, uh, I'm going to build confidence in the next step. Um, I'm I'm hopeful that it'll be better. And, mm -hmm. and I, I think people get lost in, in, in talking about growth mindset and fixed mindset. They get lost in the learning part. But the reality is, is that it's really the hope that's behind there. And, and we need hope. I mean, yeah. we're not hopeful. Um, it, it could, you know, the days are pretty ugly these days. It's, it's well, they, 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 they are. And I think, that's a, I think that's an incredibly important point that you made there about hope because Sometimes, sometimes it does feel like hope is all you have. Now, hope uh, aligned with ac action and doing things is a. But I do think hope as as a mental attitude or whatever is so incredibly important because yeah, you can look at you can look at things two ways and you can and it's very easy to get worn down by everything. But if you are doing the right things and you have that hope mindset, it will come good for you. And I like that you touched on the learning thing because I think that's the other incredibly important thing is that we have to be lifelong learners. We have to educate ourselves. And unfortunately, the pervasive culture is working against us because everything is easy. Everything is like a, a little TikTok or a Snapchat or whatever. And, and we're dumbing everything down when the reality is now is the time that we actually need to need to learn more. Right. And, and that's so important. So on the, on the growth mindset, it's, it's that ability to learn. And if you if, if you're learning, you're filled with hope. Maybe it's a chicken or the egg. You have yeah. hope. That's why you learn and you learn and then you get hope and then it becomes this perpetual cycle. Uh, but the fifth ability. So we talked about grit, resilience, mental flexibility and growth mindset. The fifth ability is unlearning, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean we're dummy down, but our brains are fried. There is so much coming to us so fast that we have to constantly learn new things. But we have to unlearn some of the behaviors that don't work as well for us. Uh, it doesn't mean that we do a brain dump. It doesn't mean that we cancel things. Uh, it doesn't mean that we can forget everything about history and science and math and, and everything that's happened in the past. But the reality is, is that we, by, they all work in concert. By, mm -hmm. if, if you have that mental flexibility and we can digest and make sense of that and go, okay, now I know what I need to push aside and what I need to learn new. Um, but our brains only have so much capacity, and especially if you're an old baby boomer, it's it's pretty filled with a lot of things. And I and I describe on learning almost like a defragging of a hard drive that we right. or even just if, if you're not a if you're not a computer person, is sometimes you just gotta declutter 
your filing cabinets, the boxes. You got to clean out stuff that was important. And you realize, why do I need five of these? Why do I need four of these? I don't need to save these receipts anymore. They just, I, because they're, they're filed in another place. Uh, so a lot of it is, is we need to declutter our brains. And that's really what mm-hmm. unlearning is. And, and to make room for, for the new things. And as, you know, as, as Einstein said, if you keep doing everything, the same thing over and over again, mm. um, that's the definition of an, and expecting a different result. That's the definition of insanity. Um, if we just learn new things and try to pile it on the old way, um, we're, yeah. we're going to go crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To be honest, you just reminded me of the, of the big box I have in one of the uh, closets here that has uh, oh. about 5,000 cables in it from like the last oh, 20 you years. One, because- you just have one of those? <laughs> I yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know the way door. it is. The way it is, you're saying, "Oh, I might use that cable again someday." And now you realize you don't even know what the cable's for. Um, right. It doesn't fit. You know, the the part doesn't fit anything anymore. But you still exactly. hold on to it. And I think that's a great point that you just made is about decluttering and unlearning. Yes, there are things we don't need anymore, and we've got to isolate what is still important. It's like those things. It's like you've got to take what from the past and what knowledge you have that's critical for you and is enduring and still has an impact and carry that forward and then get rid of the stuff that really doesn't matter anymore to make space for the new stuff that does. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, so, you know, when we talk about what does it take to thrive, um, it, it's just five abilities. And, and, you know, again, there's a lot of people that are, are really good with uh, grit and resilience and, um, you know, and, and we're going to need that. You're going to need that regardless. Uh, we, I talk about sometimes the four stages of, of adaptability and, um, you know, one is people are declining and, and they're getting lost and they're getting pressured and they're falling behind. Um, there, there's, there's all, that's pretty deep. There's a lot to go there, but the other one is coping. And there's a lot of people that are just coping now. They're just trying to figure it out. They're hoping next year is going to be better. Um, you know, the things will pass. We'll get back to this quote unquote normal again. Uh, and, and so there's a lot of people just in this holding pattern, but even if you're in the growing, the next stage would be growing and the next page is thriving. So, but even if you're in the growing and thriving stages, there's going to be things thrown at we're, we're going to meet hurdles, roadblocks, there are, there's going to be a constant flow of, of challenges that we're presented with. And that no matter what your state, where you are in this, in this stages of adaptability, no matter what your position in life is, no matter how successful you are currently, there, there's going to be a bump in the road or a sinkhole in the road or an earthquake. And uh, we're going to, you're going to need to, to have grit and resilience. So regardless of where you are, but the difference between coping and declining versus growing and thriving is really going to come down to mental flexibility, growth mindset, and unlearning. And, you know, it's important for people to identify you know, what's the weakness? What do you have to do differently? And there, and there's tons of, of information out there. Just Google it. You know, what can you do to improve that particular ability? And that gives you control. And then with control, you, you build confidence and with confidence, you get hope. And and that's what it's about. That's what we're working for. Yeah, fantastic way to end, uh, Ira. So, so much great information, and, and I totally agree with you. And all of Ira's information is going to be below this video, so you can find out more. Uh, he's he's an author, speaker. You got I, I could spend another ten minutes reading all the things that Ira's done, but yeah, I'll don't leave do that, that to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll leave that to you. Um, but I would highly, highly encourage you checking it out, the assessment, the online courses, etc. Um, listen, Ira, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for today. Uh, My name is John Golden. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.